Today we have this ridiculously awesome looking infinite series. It's the sum over the positive integers k of 2 to the k times k minus 1 factorial squared divided by 2k minus 1 factorial. And it's interesting enough that this thing even converges, but what's even better is the value it converges to. And the result will make the solution development all the more satisfying. So without further delay, let's call the sum s for reference purposes. And let me begin by writing out all the factorials in terms of gamma functions. So we know that gamma x equals x minus 1 factorial. So I can write my sum as the sum over k of 2 to the k times gamma k, and we have that thing squared, divided by 2k minus 1 factorial would be gamma 2k. Okay, cool. And the reason for introducing the gamma function notation is that it reminds us of a really cool relationship between the gamma and the beta functions. So we know that the beta function evaluated at x and y equals gamma x times gamma y divided by gamma x plus y. And in this case, we need x and y both being equal to k because that would give us gamma squared k divided by gamma 2k. So that means the sum s that we have is just the sum over the positive integers k of 2 to the k times the beta function evaluated at k and k. And the utility of introducing the beta function is that we can now make use of its integral representation. So the beta function would be the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the, in this case, k minus 1 times 1 minus x to the other argument, also k minus 1 dx. So using this integral form of the beta function, I've turned my sum of factorials problem into a sum of integrals problem, which does sound pretty cool as well. So s equals the sum over the positive integers k of 2 to the k times the integral from 0 to 1 of now x and 1 minus x both have the same exponents, k minus 1. So I could just multiply out the terms and write this as x minus x squared all to the k minus 1 dx. Okay, cool. And because this 2 to the k term is independent of the x variable with respect to which I'm integrating, I could just slip it inside the integration operator. And that would give me the sum over k of the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 to the k, you know what, I just need k minus 1 twos, and I'll take the other two outside. So I have 2 to the k minus 1 times x minus x squared also to the k minus 1 dx. And now switching up the order of the integration and summation operators, I have twice the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over k of 2 times x minus x squared all to the k minus 1 dx. And the utility of this switch up, the utility of the switch up is that I now have a geometric series that's pretty easy to evaluate. So now turning my attention to the sum here, the first term is a 1. So I have 1 divided by 1 minus the common ratio, which of course is 2 times x minus x squared. So now our sum s equals twice the integral from 0 to 1 of dx divided by 1 minus 2, 2x plus 2x squared. So my summation problem is now a very simple integration problem, which is pretty cool. So now to solve it, well, I'm going to write this as 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of dx divided by, we have 2x squared here. Let me just factor out a 2. So I'm left with x squared minus x plus 1 half. Some cancellation here. And all that's left is to complete the square in the denominator. So I have dx divided by x squared minus 2 times x times 1 half plus one half squared. 
and we already had this one half here so minus one half squared over there as well to balance things out that means i have the integral from zero to one of dx divided by all of this would be x minus one half squared plus one half minus a quarter is a quarter so i have one by four here Okay, great. And this is a very simple inverse tangent structure. So on integration, I now have, wait, this thing over here is one half squared. So I have the reciprocal of one half times the inverse tangent of x minus one half divided by one half with the limits being zero and one. And so far so good. So we have 2 times the inverse tangent of 2x minus 1 with the limits being 0 and 1. So in the limit as x approaches 1 we have 2 mi 2x two minus 1 approaching 1 inverse tangent 1 being pi by 4. So we have pi by 4 here minus Again, now for the zero limit, we have inverse tangent negative one, which is a negative pi by four. So we have two times pi by two, which of course equals three. So that means our infinite series does indeed evaluate to a pretty nice result. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.